In this video, we are going to discuss vehicle drive and some basic control concepts. Specifically, we will talk about how to implement a DC motor drive mechanism, what is PWM, that is pulse width modulation actuation. We will also discuss performance considerations for the PWM model here, then closed loop speed control of the vehicle, and finally running simulations with imported drive cycle data. This training will be applicable for both the combustion engine and electric teams. We are going to talk about DC motors which is specifically useful to electric teams. Although the control concepts here are explored with DC motors, similar workflow can be applied to combustion teams as well, for example throttle control. Finally, running simulations with imported drive cycle data will be useful for both teams. We would also like to acknowledge and thank the Virginia Tech Formula student team for providing us with data about their vehicle, motors, engines and batteries for us to use in this training. As an example, we will modify the existing vehicle model into an electric vehicle. This has an electric motor that provides the power input instead of a combustion engine. We will also create a closed loop controller so that the motor senses and reacts to the vehicle speed. We have already developed a battery powered DC motor system. The battery pack subsystem contains the various cells modeled using the equivalent circuit approach that we discussed in the Simscape introduction video. We then use a DC motor to convert the electrical energy into rotational mechanical energy. Controlling speed of the DC motor is an important problem. One approach to controlling the DC motor's speed would be to add a potentiometer to the line between the battery and the DC motor. However, this would lead to a rapid drain on the battery. Instead, we will use a pulse width modulation that is a PWM controller. First, let's see what PWM is. Let's switch to MATLAB here. Let's open an existing model here called PWM control underscore start. This shows a simple example of a PWM controller. The PWM system here receives various duty cycle values as input and then modulates the battery voltage as pulses to a load, in this case a resistor. The duty cycle input is provided by the signal builder here, so let's double click on this block to take a look at the input signal. Notice that this value is between 0 and 1. 0 means 0% duty cycle and 1 means 100% duty cycle. Let's go back to the model here. The PWM subsystem here uses the controlled PWM voltage block. To take a look at this, double click on the PWM switch subsystem and here is the controlled PWM voltage block. This block is from the Sim Electronics library. To take a look at this block, go to the Simulink library browser, scroll down to Simscape, and under Sim Electronics, under Actuators and Drivers, and Drivers, you can see the controlled PWM voltage block here. Let's go back to the model here. The controlled PWM voltage block converts the duty cycle control input to pulses of varying width. Let's double click on this block to understand its parameters better. Frequency, delay and offset control the output pulse parameters. The next two voltage parameters determine what voltage values signifies zero and maximum duty cycle. In this case, if the voltage across the positive and the negative reference is zero, output of the block is zero pulse. If the voltage across positive and negative reference is one, output is 100% duty cycle and the full battery voltage is applied. If the voltage across is 0.5, pulses of 50% duty cycle are output. The other two parameters here are used to control the model accuracy and execution speed. For our example, let's leave it at default values, so select OK to save changes. Let's go back to the top level of the model here and go ahead and simulate our model. And take a look at the scope here. 
Notice that different control demands lead to different pulse widths on the output signal. Let's go back to our model here. Now let's add our PWM control components to our DC motor system. Go ahead and copy the PWM switch subsystem. So select the subsystem and use the shortcut control C to copy the subsystem. Let's go back to MATLAB here and open up our existing model of DC motor called DC motor underscore system. Here the battery directly supplies voltage to the DC motor. Go ahead and paste the PWM switch subsystem here. Let's feed in a constant duty ratio of 0.9 to test this model for 90% duty cycle. To do this, open up your Simulink library browser, scroll up to Simulink, and then under sources, drag in a constant block into your system. Double click this block to configure it and set a constant value of 0.9 for 90% duty cycle. And connect this to the duty cycle input of your PWM switch system. Let's go ahead and bring the battery to the PWM switch subsystem here and make the connection between battery plus and battery minus of the battery pack and the PWM switch subsystem here. Now let's go ahead and connect the PWM switch subsystem to the DC motor, connect the load plus to the positive port of the DC motor and load minus to the negative port of the DC motor. Note that the electric reference could be connected to battery minus or load minus since both are interconnected anyway inside this subsystem here. Let's go back to the top level of the model. Go ahead and simulate the system here. Notice that the model is relatively slow to execute. This is because the PWM switch is opening and closing rapidly at a rate of 100 kHz which is our control frequency. This generates zero crossings that cause the time step to decrease with variable step solvers such as ODE23T that we are using here. Zero crossings are important events that help Simulink solvers take additional time steps at discontinuities such as the switching here to get the desired accuracy. This is good for detailed high fidelity simulation. Now let's take a look at the scope here to look at the speed of the DC motor. Hit auto scale to fit the signal. We can see that the speed of the motor is around 4500 RPM. Let's go back to the model here. Now let's change our duty cycle to 0.5. Go ahead and simulate the model again. Notice that the model is again slow to execute. This is a classic trade-off between simulation speed and accuracy. If you need to improve the execution speed of this model, we need to sacrifice some accuracy and make an approximate system level model instead of a detailed model. Using PWM theory, we can derive equations for an average model that averages the switching effects and removes the need for using a switch. The switch that we are talking about here is inside the PWM switch subsystem here. Let's go back to the top level of the model. For this model here, let's go ahead and see the result. Now the speed is around 2500 RPM, which makes sense since for 0.9 the speed was around 4500 RPM. Now the speed is proportionally reduced. Let's go back to the model here. Now to improve the speed of execution, Let's see the average model in action by opening an existing model. The derived model an approximation of the switching model applies an average voltage across the DC motor based on the input duty cycle. To do this, let's go back to MATLAB here and open up average control underscore DC motor here. This is the same model as we just built except for the contents of the PWM subsystem here. Here, the subsystem doesn't have a switch, instead has a combination of controlled voltage and current sensors implementing our averaging equations. 
More information regarding the averaging equations can be found in the resources section. Let's go back to the top level here. For a duty cycle of 0.5, let's go ahead and simulate the model now. First, notice that the execution speed is greatly improved. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results here. Notice that the speed is around 2500 RPM again. Let's compare this result with a full switching model. So let's bring that scope also here. Notice that the transients are different for the average and the switching model. For example, around 0.01 seconds, the average model gives us a speed above 2500 RPM, whereas the switching model suggests the speed is less than 2000 RPM. This is expected since the average model does approximate these effects. The steady state values, however, are almost the same. This is the sacrifice we need to make with accuracy to get better simulation speed. Let's go back to the model here. Note that the closer we are to a duty ratio of 1, the closer the average model behaves with respect to the switching model. Now, Let's add this DC motor open loop system to our vehicle model. First, copy our battery pack subsystem, the PWM average subsystem and the DC motor model here using our shortcut control C here. Let's go back to MATLAB. Open up the starter model for our electric vehicle, electric vehicle underscore start. This is our vehicle model where our power input is an engine. The rest of the vehicle model has the transmission, for example inside the gear subsystem is the transmission which we built in the powertrain modeling video. Let's go back one level up. Inside this subsystem we have the brakes which we built in the vehicle modeling video. Inside the vehicle subsystem we have the vehicle body and the tires that we built in the vehicle modeling video as well. Let's go back to the top level. Let's delete the engine block here. We will reuse this throttle to provide the duty cycle for our We will reuse this throttle step. We will reuse the step block to provide the duty cycle input for our motor. So let's rename it to duty step. Double click this block to reconfigure it. So at 20 seconds, let's change from an initial value of 0.75 to a final value of 0.9. Go ahead and select OK to save changes. Let's go ahead and make some space for the DC motor system here. And press Ctrl V to paste our DC motor system into our model. Let's go ahead and delete this constant block because we are not going to be using it. We don't need the converter here because the system is expecting only a simulink signal. Let's go ahead and connect the duty step into the duty input of the PWM system here. Let's go ahead and delete this broken signal here. Now let's make the DC motor connection to the rest of the transmission model. To do this, let's delete these signals here. Connect the R port to the B port of the simple gear here. Now we have successfully integrated our battery powered DC motor model into our vehicle model. Let's go ahead and simulate the system here. And take a look at our vehicle speed. We can observe the effect of gear changes at 10 and 20 seconds and the effect of brakes at 50 and 75 seconds respectively. Let's go back to the model here. Recall that the gear input is provided by the signal builder block here and the gear changes at 10 and 20 seconds. Also our brakes are applied at 50 and 75 seconds. Let's take a look at some wheel measurements here. So let's go inside the subsystem and under vehicle subsystem, let's open up the wheel quantities here. We see the normal force is changing whenever the vehicle is accelerating and during gear shifts and braking. We also see that the tire starts slipping once the front brakes are also applied at 75 seconds. Let's go back to the presentation and do a recap.
We started the discussion with PWM control and used the controlled PWM voltage block from some electronics to implement varying pulse widths based on an input duty cycle. We then added the system to our existing battery powered DC motor system to see how the speed of the motor varies as the duty cycle varies. We talked about performance considerations of our model. Variable step solvers support zero crossing and since our model had many switching events, it was causing a slowdown of the model. We approximated our switching model to an average model implementation and ran the simulation to see a speed up. After that, we added the system to our vehicle model to convert our vehicle to an electric vehicle driven by a DC motor. We connected the motor to the transmission system. We saw that the output speed shows gear changes and the effect of brakes. We also took a look at wheel quantities and observed the effect of gear changes and brakes on normal forces and slip. The next concept is to see how to control this vehicle speed. To look at this, let's switch to MATLAB. In our model, let's go to the top level here. Instead of feeding a duty cycle through a source here, let's feed this as an input from a controller. Let's use a step speed reference. To do this, let's reuse this block. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this connection here. I'm going to rename this block to speed step. Let's double click on this block to reconfigure it. Let's say at a time of 30 seconds, let's step from an initial value of 40 kilometers per hour to a final value of 5 kilometers per hour. Select OK to save changes. Now this is our speed reference. For our controller, we need to subtract the vehicle speed signal from the speed reference. To do this, go to the Simulink library browser and under math operations, drag in a sum block into your model. Double click this block to configure it and under the list of signs, let's have one positive sign and one negative sign here. Go ahead and connect the speed step to the positive port. The negative port is going to be our sensed speed in kilometers per hour. So that is the second signal in the scope here. The result of the subtraction here is the error which we need to feed to a controller block. Let's use PID control for reference tracking. To do this, let's go to the Simlink library browser and under discrete, look for the discrete PID controller and drag one of these into your model. This block takes in error as the input and produces a control output. Let's double click on this block to get more information here. You can see the general discrete PID compensator formula that is used to compute the controller output here. For our application, let's configure the block to be a PI controller block. Let's specify a sample time of 0.05 for our discrete PID controller here. Next, we'll set the parameters P and I, which are the controller gains for the proportional and integral terms here. There are several ways to tune and set these parameters. Refer to the documentation for more information on PID tuning. For our example, let's set P to a value of 0.1 and I to a value of 0.05 respectively. These are experimentally derived values. Next, recall that since the controller output feeds the duty cycle, it must be between 0 and 1. To set this limit, go to the PID Advanced tab check the limit output option and set the saturation limits. In this case, the upper saturation limit is 1 and the lower saturation limit is 0. Go ahead and select OK to save changes for this block. Connect the error output to our controller's input and the output of the controller feeds the duty cycle value here. Simulate the model. Let's take a look at the vehicle speed here. Observe that the speed is maintained above a reference of 40 km per hour till 30 seconds and then it starts going down towards 5 km per hour. 
Let's go back to the model here. Notice that there are also a couple of warnings here. Let's take a look at it by clicking on the hyperlink here. We see that the warning is about an algebraic loop. The warning also says to get more details about this loop, use this command simulink.blockdiagram.getAlgebraic loops on the name of the model. So let's go ahead and select this, copy this command using the shortcut Control C. Let's go back to MATLAB here, paste this command, and then execute this command. Now let's go back to our model here. The command shows the algebraic loop in this model. Directly connecting a simulink output signal, in this case the sensor output, to the input of an upstream block, in this case a summer here, causes simulink to iteratively solve for the value of that signal. This occurs when all the blocks in the loop have their output depend on the current instance of the input. This is known as algebraic loop and can significantly slow down simulation or even converge to incorrect results. This occurs in our model because Simulink Solver treats the entire physical network as a single atomic component whose interfaces are defined by the Simulink to physical signal and the physical signal to Simulink converter blocks. There are several ways to remove and break algebraic loops. Refer to the documentation to learn more about the causes for algebraic loops and how you can break them. Our algebraic loop occurs in a discrete system, so we could add a delay element into the feedback path of the dynamic system to model the sensor delay and break the dependence on the current input and output. Note that using unit delays may not always work, especially in case where you intend the loop to model a physical or continuous time system. In that case, a carefully chosen transfer function might work better. For our model, let's add a unit delay block to our feedback path here. First, let's clear the algebraic loop highlighting. To do this, open up our window here which popped up. Clear all and then exit. The unit delay block can be found by going to the Simulink library browser and in the discrete library, scroll down to find the unit delay block here. Drag one of these blocks into your model. To connect this in the feedback path, simply drag and drop the block on the feedback path to automatically flip the block and connect it. Double click the unit delay block and set the sample time to 0 0.05 to match the sample time of our controller. Select OK to save changes and go ahead and simulate the model again. Notice that the warning has now disappeared. Let's go ahead and take a look at the vehicle speed scope. Observe that our speed is still maintained above the reference of 40 km per hour. Also, we apply the step down in speed reference from 40 to 5 km per hour at 30 seconds. But the controller doesn't seem to be affecting the speed until around 32 seconds. This is because the integrator in the controller is winding up. This means that once the integrator hits the output saturation limits, it keeps integrating trying to reduce the error. This might affect the controller performance since if we would want to bring down the integral value, it would now take a longer time to discharge. Implementing an anti-windup mechanism helps cure this. The PID block allows us to implement an anti-windup mechanism. To do this, let's go back to our model, double click on the PID block and go to the PID Advanced tab. Here under the anti-windup method, you have a couple of algorithms you can choose to implement the anti-windup mechanism. Let's choose clamping for our application here. This means the integrator will stop integrating when either of the limits, upper or lower, are hit. Click OK to save changes and go ahead and simulate the model again. Double click on the scope to take a look at the vehicle speed. Now we see that the speed is maintained closer to 40 km per hour after 20 seconds and responds quickly around 30 seconds to reach 5 km per hour. Let's switch to MATLAB here. 
Another way to feed in duty cycle or throttle value is to use drive cycle data. Let's see next how to import drive cycle data to run our simulations. Let's suppose we have data in a Microsoft Excel file. For example, we have the file drive cycle data.xlsx. Let's right click on this file and open this file outside MATLAB. Here we have example drive cycle data. It has three pedal values, throttle, front and rear brake pedals. These are normalized between 0 and 1. 0 means the pedals were completely disengaged and 1 means fully engaged at maximum effort. Let's go back to our model here. Instead of the duty and brake inputs here, let's use these drive cycle data values to drive our simulation. To do this, we need to import the drive cycle data into MATLAB first. Let's go back to MATLAB. To import data, right click on the file and choose import data. This opens the import tool. We can select range of data either by specifying the range here or selecting interactively here. Here we can select the format of imported data. We can leave this in separate column vectors for our application. Here we see the original table of data. This row here specifies the name of the imported variable. For example, let's change time to pedal time as the variable name that it needs to use for import. Once we are ready for import, click the import selection button. Let's go to MATLAB to take a look at the workspace. Here we see front brake pedal, rear brake pedal, pedal time and throttle pedal here. Suppose you need to import from several similar sources, for example, drive cycle data for different labs in different Excel files but with the same format, and you would like to automate the import process using MATLAB scripts or functions instead of interactively doing it for every file, we could also automatically generate a MATLAB code for this import that we just did here. To do this, go back to the import tool, click on the drop down of the import selection and say generate script or function. Let's say generate function here to take a look at an example. Here we can see the MATLAB code that has the MATLAB commands to do the same import. We could also have a post processing MATLAB script to process and visualize the data in MATLAB. Let's go back to MATLAB here. For example, let's open up process drive data.m. This script manipulates the data to set brake pedal values which are denoted by the variables front brake pedal and rear brake pedal here. These values as discussed before can only be between 0 and 1. However, it was found that some values in the Excel file were less than 0. This could have been because of noise in the sensor for example. We can set them to 0 here by using MATLAB commands. Then we plot the data. Let's go ahead and run the script to take a look at the data. Here we see the throttle, front and rear brake pedal values. Let's bring this data into our model now. To do this, let's open up an existing model. Let's switch to MATLAB here. Scroll down and open up drive cycle underscore electric vehicle underscore start. This model is the same as the electric vehicle model which we developed earlier, except that the constant and step input source blocks for throttle and brakes have been replaced. Instead, we will use input ports to bring in data from MATLAB. These input ports can be found in the Simulink library. To access this, go to the Simulink library browser and under sources, you can find the input ports here. Let's go back to the model here. Note that we have been using these input ports as subsystem interfaces all this time. For example, let's go inside the gear subsystem here, 
we see an input port here which acts as a subsystem interface for the gear shift command. Let's go back to the top level. Now we will use them at the top level of the model to import data from MATLAB. Input ports 1, 2 and 3 are throttle, front and rear brake pedal values respectively. Let's assume that the normalized throttle and duty are the same values and map directly on a one-to-one -one relationship. For the brakes, note that we are using a linear lookup table to map our brake pedal values to forces. For example, let's double click on this block here. We are mapping 0 to 1 pedal values to 0 to 1000 Newton brake forces. Select OK to save changes. Now, to load model inputs from the MATLAB workspace, let's open up model configuration parameters by clicking on the gear icon here. In the configuration parameters, let's go to data import export and select the input option here. One way we can represent the inputs is using a matrix where the first column represents the time. For example, here our time variable is called pedal time in MATLAB and subsequent columns represent the input signal values. So here our first input signal is throttle pedal, second input signal is front brake pedal and the last input signal is rear brake pedal. Note that these input signal values entered here should follow the same order as the input ports here. Let's go back to the configuration parameters. Select OK to save changes and simulate the model. Let's take a look at the vehicle speed here. We can see that the speed is not smooth anymore because of the noisy nature of the throttle and brake inputs. We saw the throttle and brake inputs in the figure window here. Let's go back to the model here. Note that the procedure to import data into simulations is the same whether the model is combustion engine driven or DC motor driven. An exercise is available to explore importing drive cycle data with a combustion engine model. Let's go back to the presentation and do a recap. We talked about controlling the vehicle speed using a closed loop controller. We gave a speed reference to a discrete PI controller and saw that the speed was successfully tracked. We then imported the drive cycle data into MATLAB using the import tool. We imported each of the columns as a variable. Then we used Simulink input ports to serve as a source for the MATLAB variables. We specified these variables in the data import export pane in the configuration parameters of the model. One of the ways to specify this data is to have time as the first column followed by the data in the order in each of the succeeding column. In summary, we talked about implementing a DC motor driven electric vehicle, basics of PWM actuation and average model approximation, implementing closed loop speed control with the PWM. Finally, we talked about importing drive cycle data to run your simulations. This concludes this video.